What's up guys, Austin Billworks here. Today I'm gonna to show you how to install one of our new 2015 up WX short shifters. So let's get started. Now that we have the car up in the air, I'm gonna start by removing the heat shield, which is four 12 millimeter bolts. So I'm gonna use my ratchet with a 12 millimeter socket. Once we have those four bolts out, I'm gonna go ahead and get the heat shield out of the way. Next step, we're gonna remove these four nuts, which holds on the cover for the shifter cables. These are 10 millimeter nuts. I'll just get on here with my ratchet. Now that I have the four nuts off, I'll go ahead and remove the cover. We can just fish that around the drive shaft here. So next step is we're gonna remove the cables from the shifter. So you'll see this metal retaining clip here. You have to spread these two tabs to get it to pull off the bottom of the shifter rod. Now it is a two-handed job, so I'm gonna get up in here and, and pop it off. It's not too hard once you spread the clips. I'm just kind of leave it hanging to the side. There's another cable here. I'm gonna push that off to the side. Like that. I'll kind of push that up out of the way for now. Next step is we'll remove the four 10 millimeter nuts that hold the black housing to the frame of the car. Now that we have those four nuts off, we're ready to move inside the car and remove the shifter assembly. Now that we're inside the vehicle, I'm gonna start by opening up the center console. We'll have to pull out this fabric pad. And there's two 10 millimeter bolts inside the center console. We're gonna loosen those up and remove them. Next step is removing the e-brake boot. I like to grab up front here. You could also grab in the back at the same time and you wanna pull straight up. But once you have it popped off, I'll kind of pull it off to the side here. That'll expose a Phillips head bolt. I'm just gonna take a Phillips head screwdriver and remove that. I'm just gonna put that in a cup holder. Then you need to grab under the center console here and just pop up. There's a small clip that all you have to do is just put enough force on it and it'll release. We're just gonna kind of push that back a little bit just to expose this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the shift knob. This of course has a built work shift knob installed, so I'm just gonna unthread it, set that to the side. Since we have the center console removed, I'm gonna grab here at the shift boot and I need to pull up and backwards to the car. You'll see it pops out of place and I'll grab up front here and pull it straight back. Then we'll remove this whole piece. We'll just pull the boot up over the reverse lockout. And I'll set that to the side. That'll expose the rest of the shifter assembly inside the car here. Next step is to remove these four 12 millimeter bolts. Once those four are out, you wanna make sure you remove these wires from the side of the shifter assembly. There's just one on this side and one on this side. Might need to use a small pliers to grab it and push it out. There's also two Phillips head bolts here. Now that we have those out, we need to go ahead and split the console here. Doesn't take much force. You wanna kind of push that to the side. Now the entire shifter assembly is ready to come out. I'm just gonna grab the lockout, maybe grab back here. Grab wherever you need to to go ahead and pop it out. This small white clip is what holds it in once you take the bolts out, so it'll take some force. Once we have it removed, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it over to our workbench so we can disassemble it there. Now that I have the shifter assembly out of the car, I'm gonna start on the disassembly process. 
I do like to wear gloves for this just because the entire shifter assembly is fairly greasy. This will kind of just protect your hands and make it a little easier. So first thing I'll do is remove these two Phillips head screws. I'll take my Phillips head screwdriver. Of course, we'll remove the metal tabs as well. Next step, I'm gonna remove this 12 millimeter bolt. I'm just gonna use a quarter inch drive ratchet. Just make sure you don't lose that lock washer. Next step, I'm gonna use these wrench flats here for a 17 millimeter wrench. On this side, it'll be a 10 millimeter socket. It does get a little tricky trying to hold that wrench into place. Once we remove that nut, we can go ahead and push this bolt through. And once we have that bolt out, I can take this entire assembly here and remove it off of the pivot. You can see it'll come off in two pieces. This piece is, of course, very greasy. I need to remove these two nuts. These are seven millimeter. So I'm gonna use a seven millimeter socket. Shouldn't take much to break them loose. And we'll go ahead and push those bolts out. They'll slide right out. Then what we can do next is push this entire center assembly in through this larger housing. That'll slide right apart. I'm gonna set this to the side. And before I remove and loosen anything else, I'm gonna knock out this roll pin. This will allow me to remove the lockout from the factory shifter rod. I'm gonna use the vise for that. And I'm gonna take an eighth inch punch. I'm just gonna drive this roll pin through the shaft. Yep, and it'll drop through. Then I can essentially pull the shifter rod through the lockout. It'll take some force to pull it out. But as you can see how greasy it is, one of the many reasons why I like to wear gloves. Next step, we'll remove these two 10 millimeter nuts. I'll grab my ratchet again. I'll set those to the side as well. Then with those two nuts removed, I'll be able to pull off this bottom cover. We'll also want to remove this white housing here. Keep in mind there's an O-ring on there, so we don't want to lose that. And then the entire shifter rod will be able to be removed from this housing. And before we throw this away, I want to make sure we remove this, this white cap. I just like to use a pair of pliers, just kind of pop it off. And we'll reuse that on the new billet works shifter. So I'm gonna go ahead and take our billet works short shifter. You'll receive it fully assembled. So we'll disassemble it first. Take an Allen wrench and remove these two bolts on the side. This will allow the top of the reverse lockout to be removed from the lower portion of the lockout. Then this will expose a retaining ring. In that case, we'll use the snap ring pliers. And I'll get on that retaining ring, open that up. I'll be able to pull off the retaining ring from the shaft. Then there'll be a washer I'll remove and the spring as well. Next step. Next step is we'll grab another Allen wrench and remove this bolt. Pull that out. That'll allow the lower portion of the lockout to be removed from the shaft. 
Now you will want to be careful removing it because there's an O-ring inside. That O-ring might get caught on the retaining ring groove, so you just want to be careful that it doesn't shred off a piece of the O-ring. I'll set that to the side. And now we can install the billet work shifter into the factory housing. We'll place that in just like the factory shifter. Now you also want to make sure that there's a small nut inside of here that is possible that it can fall out. If you have this left over, you can't figure out where it went. You just want to slide that back in here so it falls into place. So I'm going to hold the assembly kind of upside down like that and take the white housing, place that on top. Make sure that O-ring stays in place. Then we'll take the black cover and place that back on over top. And we'll take those two 10 millimeter nuts and thread those back on. We'll snug those up. Now that our shifter rod is assembled in the factory housing, we can go ahead and insert it back into the factory larger housing. That'll just slide back into place. And you wanna make sure the pivot is facing the opening here. There won't really be a way to do it backwards, but if you know which way it needs to go, it'll be a lot easier to assemble. Then we'll take these two bolts, slide them through this way, because there's a set of wrench flats that hold it into place. Make sure those are seated correctly. Then we'll take those small nuts and thread those on. They don't need to be super tight because they are a very small nut. Then the next step is we'll take this part and slide it down in through the slot and place it over the pivot here. Kind of let it hang there. And we'll take our larger bolt here and slide that through here and that'll slide through the entire housing. I'm gonna make sure that that is positioned correctly. And take that other 10 millimeter nut, thread that on this side. We'll go ahead and snug that up with our 10 millimeter socket. And again, with our 17 millimeter wrench. Next step is to position this part. You'll see you'll have to rotate this a little bit to get these two grooves to line up on these two gray pins. You have to pry those apart a little bit because they're spring loaded. I'm gonna lay it on its side here. I need to rotate the entire assembly so this hole lines up with the threaded insert. And what I'll need to do is put a little bit of pressure on this spring to get that hole to line up. We're back to using this shoulder bolt. Make sure you don't lose that lock washer. I'll thread that in there. Then I'll grab our 12 millimeter socket. Is to reassemble the metal tabs. This is again with the Phillips head screws. Now that we have the entire assembly back together, I'm going to reassemble our reverse lockout assembly. And I also need to reinstall this white piece from the factory shifter. 
It'll take some pressure to, to pop into place. So before I reinstall the reverse lockout, I like to use a little bit more lubricant. Now our reverse lockout does come pre-lubricated. I do like to add a little bit more. This is just like a three in one lubricating oil. I like this because it's a little bit lighter of a lubricant, a little bit more slick. So then we'll take our lower reverse lockout piece and slide that over. Again, watch with the O-ring on the retaining groove. It'll kind of stop there. And you want to kind of carefully wiggle around it so it slides over the groove. You want to slide it the whole way down. Then we can take our spring, install that back over, take our washer, slide that over. And take our snap ring pliers with our retaining ring. We'll open that up. Slide that over until it seats in the groove. Yep, there we go. And what I'll do next is I'll lay it on its side. I need to pull up the lockout so we can put the bolt back in through the slot. Next step is to take the upper portion of the reverse lockout. If you want to, you can add a little bit more lubricant to the shaft again. But since we already put some on, I'm gonna slide that over. Then you wanna line up the clearance hole with the tapped holes. I'll slide that over. Take our Allen wrench and our small button head screws. We wanna lift up a little bit on the lockout or on the lower portion of the lockout. And then go ahead and thread these. Thread that bolt in and I'll spin it to the other side. Now your billet works short shifter assembly is ready to go back in the car. Now that we're back inside the car, I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the shifter assembly. We'll locate that back into place. I'll reinstall these four 12 millimeter bolts. I like to get them started by hand first, just to make sure nothing's cross-threading. Then I'll take our ratchet and snug up each bolt. I'm going to go ahead and reassemble the rest of the trim. Now we'll go underneath the car and reattach all the cables and put the covers and plates back on. Now that we're back underneath the car, we're gonna go ahead and reassemble everything back to how it was. Then once you reattach the cables, put the cover back on. Then I'm gonna put the heat shield back into place.
And now we're all done underneath the car and we'll go back up inside of the car and double check, make sure everything functions properly. Now that we have our 2015 and up WRX short shifter installed, head over to our website and purchase yours. We'll see you next time.